after a hard day's work. To walk in a party and then everyone turn and look at you, then they put on the single. And then people start clapping, I was like, oh my God. That was so devastation. Like walking in and then I put on the single, oh my God. I wanted to go straight to the back and sit in the corner and kind of, you know, cower in the corner and get up underneath the pillows. It's a good feeling, but I was a little nervous. The DJ was hot, played all the records I wanted to hear. I'm the one. And I got a chance to kind of let loose and dance a bit, which was fun. It was a cool night. It doesn't take a genius to recognize how I laid out how a deceased Jane Doe ended up in the New York federal indictment and how people were continuously talking about Aliyah, Aliyah, but skipping over certain facts that led me to believe a lot of these things that they're talking about when they get on these platforms trying to sell these books is the very reason they ended up in the position they were in. But it doesn't change all the documented evidence that refutes a lot of the things that these janky ass people testify to. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down the most overlooked interview that Aliyah did in 1995 that obviously signaled to a person like me that it was the janky ass people within Robert Kelly's camp doing janky ass business. What? Hey, you see this? Look, if it ain't official Dana J, leave out for Kelly. Prima Donna News, I don't even want to see it. Just take the call. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. They, Why would I? Well, I'm, I'm, How stupid would it never be held for anybody. R. Kelly with all I've been through in my way, way past to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said. Why, how stupid would I be to do that? I didn't say you That's were holding. That's stupid, guys. I didn't Is this camera on me? Yes, it's on. That's stupid. Use your <laughs> common sense. Don't Forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just use your common sense. How stupid would it be for me to, with my crazy past and what I've been through, oh, right now I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Robert, Stop it. Y'all Rob quit playing. Quit okay. playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me. I, I'm fighting for my life. With everything that's going on now, I challenge you to go back and take a second look at all that I presented to you and how it seemed to me that the government was willing to put this facade out here, use a deceased Jane Doe, use a man testifying to criminal actions that he says he participated in, eliminated key people involved in this shenanigan and placed all the blame on one individual under the guise of a Rico. Meanwhile, people failed to realize how all of these individual players not only reveal to me the jankiness behind this new case, but all of the extortion that was revealed in R. Kelly's first trial in 08 that a lot of people wanted to rehash while individuals wanted to paint this facade that Robert Kelly was holding people hostages. He was out here being a danger to the community. Meanwhile, I believe that it was individuals that were hiding behind being labeled his inner circle that trickled all of this into play. And then when we get to the trial and we see all of the immunity deals, it should make some sense. Parents, when you knew that's, that, that's what he was about to do, why didn't you call them? That's it. I'm, all right, this is where, I, right, let me tell you, I didn't call the parents. I, why, I worked, why, for, Robert, why you, why you I worked for Robert Kelly. Listen to me. I worked for Robert Kelly. Okay, this just happened. 
we get to Chicago, I talk to Daryl. I say, man, what you doing, man? He can't do this, man. I was supposed to call Daryl, but my loyalty was to Robert. Right then, then. I didn't know he was sleeping with him. Well, you knew he was about know to marry her. You knew, you knew, you knew, you knew, you knew it was uncomfortable that it was illegal. You, you it was knew uncomfortable that she, she's situation. minor. I mean, it, it was an uncomfortable situation. Are you a father? Uh, at that moment, are you? Are yes, you? I am. So, yes, you, I am. Do you have a daughter? I have remorse. I have remorse for that man so much. It was a bad decision. I made that. I'm not a perfect person. Now, it seemed to me the hardest thing for people to comprehend was the actual charge being associated with Aliyah and the fact that people were out here trying to make other charges seem like that was actually what's going on when, as I said, I believe a lot of these interviews spawned a lot of investigations that prompted people to try to infiltrate certain circles. The problem is that when people came to these platforms such as YouTube and other social media platforms, they were all over the place with their information versus their intent. Now, it's for the general audience to figure out the intent, but it don't take a genius to recognize that if people wanted to actually get to the bottom of things and get to the truth, it's a lot of key players that were missing in this testimony instead of letting people come out here and continue to further incriminate the man while people overlook the common sense that signaled red flags to me from jump. The fact that all of these people relied on janky individuals to corroborate these stories of a deceased person and ignore all of the information they could have went back to refer on and see the credibility that these characters held. With that being said, it wouldn't have taken long for you to unveil all of the extortion that I believe I uncovered along my research. The fact that the government brought it out as a RICO enterprise and still did not charge everybody that were aforementioned as bodyguards, assistants, etc., etc., and other individuals who were complicit to certain crimes being testified are clearly the red flags that let me know something ain't right with this case. Now you got the judge threatening to impeach specific witnesses. You got these witnesses who can't even stick to their original grand jury testimonies. Then you got these janky ass documents which still don't prove shit when you go to R. Kelly's PSR report and he tells you pretty much what I get when I think about this whole topic at hand when it comes to Aaliyah and R. Kelly that possibly she had a crush on this man. But there is no way you can convince me that the way people maneuvered this whole thing, it doesn't spell out blackmail and extortion. Now, per Demetrius Smith, R. Kelly had nothing to do with this bribery that he committed. And yet we see that Robert Kelly was still convicted of this. More evidence as to why things laid out in his appeal should be granted when, again, if you go to the Chicago trial, you can see how that trial revealed even more corruption and extortion that was overlooked in New York. Now, what does that say when you have two different cases, two different jurisdictions, and each of these witnesses are contradicting the next, when you can easily go back in under an appeal, bring in fresh witnesses, fresh evidence, and prove how all of these people were in cahoots for whatever gain they wanted to see with their career? Doesn't change the fact that, as I said from day one, all of these influencers, all of these production companies should be held accountable for letting these janky ass people manipulate these platforms in order to push propaganda, period. Now, I'm not going to read this whole article just like I wasn't going to read all of these motions and indictments. But if you go back to the sister to sister interview with Aaliyah, 
you can peep the dynamic of this whole conversation and how Alia never seemed to classify herself as this victim that other people wanted to now paint of her. In fact, just as her parents and other people verified, someone was always around to monitor her. Now, one thing for sure is, if you go to R. Kelly's PSR report, it mentioned an incident of her threatening to run away, in which this plan was hatched. Now, right or wrong, it doesn't change the fact that we all know how an authentic marriage proceeds, and the things that people did behind the scenes to appease a volatile artist is one thing, but to allow common criminals to use these platforms to build this RICO enterprise, use one janky-ass witness, overlook the fact that he brought in Daryl McDavid as someone who hatched this whole idea with him, and exclude that Robert Kelly had nothing to do with the actual idea. How can anyone continue to let people keep using this woman as their victim scapegoat? while overlooking how using a bad act witness such as Javante Cunningham to tell somebody else's story only made the situation stand out more when it came to red flags and how, yet again, I feel things like this will help Robert Kelly's appeal. Now, maybe it's just me, but I feel like a lot of shit that went on in the past ain't gonna be sliding this (laughs) go-round. Something good